What you got there? Um, this is the passenger side ender fender apron along with shop tag. This is that piece right there. And you may, may remember <coughs> excuse me, the rust that was in here. It's no longer in there. Let's open this one up. Hopefully it's the opposite side. Lucky, it's the opposite side, which is what we're looking for. Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of our restoration of this 69 M code four speed Mustang fastback. Remember the first one we were talking about uh, sort of the uniqueness of it, a little of the history of it. Um, this and, and a lot of the rust in it too. Um, hopefully today we're taking steps to, uh, to eliminate some of those problems. In front of me, you see the ender inner fender aprons and shock towers, right and left, thank goodness, um, that will go into this car. This can take a lot of welding, a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting, not in that order. Um, but we'll get them, we'll get these in. I, I did take one of the frame rails here that I ordered separately and just, just, just slid it on to where it actually will go. This is a frame rail that goes underneath the floor and another one goes on the other one and maybe it's the wrong side this side this is the other side i'm sorry but anyway this has the uh, emergency brake uh, bracket on it should have a emergency brake bracket on the inside but anyway it's the same same distance both sides and they'll go together and then there's a cross member for the transmission that goes across and the distance from here to the cross member of the transmission will be um very important uh, of course we'll take measurements and um and, and get that correct. Um, let me go grab that cross member just so you can see how how it will line up. Got the cross member, and it will fit right about there. And of course, it'd be welded in properly. And the distance from the inside of the cross member mount to the uh, engine support mount is very important. Um, we will get that, we will get that correct. But we will essentially cut these out. I'm thinking the cutting out is gonna be pretty easy, um, as long as I don't cut the wrong thing. I don't wanna cut the topper, the top 
part of the cowl panel, um, nor do I want to cut any of the frame rails or the outside panels here, this one here, that's the up, up, upper part of the cowl, nor the frame rails down here. But everything else is coming out of this car. Keep the measurements together, keep the dimensions correct, and then we'll start putting the um, firewall back in. This goes in, this will pretty much set the distance from here to there from the outside walls. Once we get that spotted in, tacked in, at that point we can start manipulating the um, um, shock towers, inner fender aprons into position. And we will temporarily put them in place, do a lot of measurements, and then we'll finish spot welding them in. Um, that's pretty much all on the parts. They're big parts, they're heavy, they just came it just came on a freight truck, so I had to help the guy unload them. But let's look at the engine real quick. We have, um, I pulled the engine. You can may remember the, the, um, the video last time the engine was still in the car. But I pulled the engine, and I kind of believe the engine's been in before, although the bore is a standard four-inch bore. Um, everything is super clean inside. Um, here's the... Um, the valve covers, if you look in the valve covers, they're just, they're just spotless, especially for an engine that's got at least 102,000 miles on it, maybe more, because as you know, it's been, in, it's been in service for over 50 years. Um, but you look at the top of the heads right here, they look the same way. There's, there's no smudge, no, no sludge or anything. I can't even get my fingers smudged in them. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking everything's pretty good, because I'll have the heads looked at at, at the... Uh, machine shop and we'll probably have to install guides in the uh, in the heads and some valve seals um, but I did pull a piston out piston looks fine scuffing marks on the side are, are not worn away I think they're um, I think they are aftermarket pistons because I don't see Ford on them anywhere so I think probably I'll just keep them the same and um, re-ring it and put it back together but if you do if you look at this journal right here and get real close on that, that, that is slick. I mean, they're, they're standard bearings. I, I did pull, uh, I think the number two cap off, the number four cap off and looked at that. Bearings look great in, in this car. So I'm thinking just a polish on the crank and new bearings, put it back together, we'll be able to go. Uh, I will put a new cam in it. I usually use, um, cam research and I get the lifters and the cam broken in together so the startup is 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 no problem at all um, I always worry I had an engine I got one time that had a flat cam lobe and I know it's because it was started up uh, improperly uh, it trashed the engine had had to spend a lot of money to get that fixed so I have always worried about startup uh, and whenever I can use um, cam research I always do not a plug for, for cam research because they, they don't they don't know I'm gonna call them but I'm, I'm I'm I always recommend them on a Ford engine anyway that's all they do anyway so what's this oh that's a that's a piece that holds my pistons it's actually just it's actually a two liter drink container uh, that works out just right um, I guess if I was working on V10s I would need uh, two of these but um, the V8s work out great. They, 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 the piston fits in there perfectly. I guess it could hold a, probably a four and a quarter inch bore, but um, it, it works out great and it kind of keeps them in order. Um, other than that, we, we got some more parts back here. Let's look at those real quick. Of course, a lot of this, you may see a duplicate uh, cross member here. That's because I uh, double ordered. I'll be sending one of them back. These are the torque boxes that will work in conjunction with the frame rails and the uh, uh, rocker panels to, uh, to, to form the stiffness of the front frame. Here's the other side of the uh, frame rail, lower for, floor frame rail, um, that has the emergency brake cable on it, and that goes on the driver's side. And here is the, um, the strut rod uh, brackets that will weld diagonally on the cross member, front cross member and the um, uh, frame rails. 
and give it some, some stiffness. And let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, right here. Um, here's the front core support. And let's walk over there and I'll slide that in. I'm kind of, I'm like a kid after Christmas trying to put this stuff together. It's like a big Lego set, I guess. Except you need a welder. But this, that'll go there. The other one will go on the other side. Now it's not in there perfect, but it's, uh, it's, that's the general direction it will go. And uh, it'll get all, all get welded together and we'll use some braces and some, um, making sure our measurements are right. I can't stress that enough. I'll worry about it until I do it. Till I get my dimensions correct because it, once you weld it it's a lot of work to get it unwelded anyway so what what we're gonna be doing next is uh, we're gonna be getting the engine torn down completely get it to the uh, machine shop let them look at it they'll probably want to reestablish the cross hatch and the cylinder bores um, I'll let them go through the heads they'll probably do a valve job just to clean it up then we'll order some uh, parts Rings, bearings, gasket set, for example. I ordered a cam, and we'll get we'll get the engine installed uh, back together and painted, and I'll put a bag over it, and I'll save it for that magic moment when I want to put the engine back in this car. Uh, the way I sort of do things I've done on other cars is I, I take I, I'll take a system, for example, the the power steering system which you see behind you laying on my table. I'll break that down. And I'll put all new hoses, all new seals in it. Then I'll wrap it up and I'll just put it away somewhere. And then when I need it, it's already done. Heater box, same way. I'll go through, put a set of seals in it. Um, it, it wasn't leaking, but I, I'm not going to take a chance because replacing a heater core in a heater box in a car, I can't think of much worse things. But we'll, we'll, um, we'll put a new heater core in that, uh, probably a new blower motor, new resistor. And... We'll wrap that up and I'll hide it somewhere. Um, and when I need it, we'll go from that. Uh, once I get everything welded in, I'll pull the rear end out. We'll do the same thing. We'll pull the rear end out, um, pull the third member out. Um, I, I'll replace, I'm thinking about replacing the gears. It's got three, three in it now, probably get a three and a quarters. I'll set that rear end up, put new bearings in it inside and outside on the axles and, uh, paint it, wrap it up, save it for later. Um, and then we'll start working on the body. Of course, you know, I do have the quarter panel to replace. And I got some work to do on the other quarter panel, too, and the rear um, uh, taillight panel. But anyway, um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be working on it. I do want to thank everybody for wa that watched it, uh, my last video. Um, and, and I appreciate you watching this one. And if, if you have any comments or have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.